Hey guys, it's Avi from JustWriteMusic.com. Welcome to another video helping you to find that prolific writer inside and stay sane as an artist. This week I'm going to bare my soul about my struggles with Sibelius. This program can be infuriating. So I thought it could be fun to blow off some steam and talk about the things that I hate the most about it. These will often be little annoyances that over time and frequency become the kind of thing worth murdering over. Before we dive into this however minutes hate, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more videos on writing music, mental health, and a bit of productivity. What you're seeing here, you know, this, is a, this is a piece that is currently in the works, and if you see over here, I, I got this little keyboard guy out for you so you can see what, uh, what stuff I'm hitting. But the first thing I want to talk about, my first like really, oh, the thing I hate, is inputting time signatures and clefs. Now, I, I love messing with time signatures and using alternating ones, and I think it's really cool and can add a great and cool effect to the music. Uh, Sibelius makes it really easy to switch time signatures just by hitting T. In fact, I shared this this tip of hitting T in my recent video about Sibelius shortcuts, and, it, and be, it, it's, it's up there somewhere. So say I wanted to make this, instead of a bar of 4-4, four, four, I wanted to make it a bar of 3-4, just hit T, and then I would just have to add 3-4. Boom, right there. Cool, so now it's in 3-4, and it goes back to 4-4 four, four for us over here. But like, it created this extra bar. You know, it's it's not, it's an extra bar of the new meter that we wanted to be in. And, you know, and, and then it pushes this, everything that came after this bar forward. And then what happens here is like, okay, well, did we want to keep this up? Uh, if not, and it's easy if you just wanted to chop everything off, essentially, we have to, you know, take it away like that. And then, okay, now it's kind of nice with them kind of mess, messes up the ties a little bit over here. So it's not a huge deal right there, but it does still kind of suck. Like it still pushes everything forward and you have to recalibrate everything over here just to make sure that the timing is right. In my opinion, just just take the beat away. You know, don't give us another uh, measure. We'll create it if we want it rather than making us get rid of it 90% of the time when we don't actually need it because we're trying to take the beat away usually in this circumstance. Now this is less of a problem if we're adding a beat, say we're going to five, four, instead of going to three, four, right? Just hit T again, hit five, four. Cool, not a problem here. Not a problem because we're just adding a beat. I, I get the idea of what they're trying to do, but it just, for me, it's it's just one of those things that every single time I'm just like, ah, oh, I gotta delete this thing again and fix all the other things. But clefs, clefs make it real frustrating. This is really where things get annoying. It gives it to you ahead of where you want it. So I'm going to hit Q and make this into a bass clef. Like it's, it goes ahead. I wanted that note. I wanted this F to be in the F clef like that. That's what I highlighted, right? But no, instead it gives it to you ahead of it. This just sucks. And, and it's something that you think you could get used to over time, or at least you think I could get used to over time. And you know, I don't, I forget it literally every time I go to do it. And invariably I always have to, you know, cue, want to do this. And I always have to move it back. And it's just, it's just one of those things that get, an that annoys me every time. Then it's back like this. It doesn't do the spacing right over here. Uh, it's just, it's just a nightmare. It's just a nightmare. I hate it. And the next thing that I just really hate about Sibelius, and this is kind of more of like a love-hate type of thing, is the magnetic layout. The magnetic layout is great when it works and infuriating when it doesn't. It's essentially this feature that's supposed to keep everything tidy and good looking good without having to adjust every little thing, right? So say if you move this, it kind of shows you where everything is, right? So here you can see magnetic layout put, put on there and uh, it essentially just makes it everything nice. If you see when I click it off, everything's all in the way and jagged and it just automatically makes gets things out of the way which is nice instead of having to move every single one just oh just like that everything just moves um so putting on magnetic layout is helpful when it works um, but when formatting a score it will make some strange choices for you and the biggest pain point for me is doing bar spacing in these systems right? When I'm trying to make it look nice at the very end after I'm finished writing the music. Sometimes it just gives you this ugly one bar per system like this, especially when I'm trying to make it fit for an earlier system. Like, like, look at this. This is just awful. This is just two bars per system even. Like sometimes you wind up with stuff like this and it, it just like, come on, this just ruins everything. It, it bunches everything up over here and it's just, it's just a nightmare. Like no one, no one wants to read from that. That looks 
absolutely awful. It's so easy for everything to get messed up and you have to sit and deal with all this nonsense with formatting your score for people to actually read it. And it, like I said, we can turn off magnetic layout, but look at this. Then we have to take every little thing and move every single little thing with the spacing to see how it how it's going to line up. And it doesn't even give you the little dashed outline when it's off. Right, so it gives you this dash outline and it tells you when everything is synced up. So if you're like me and you want your scores to be re read really, really well, my teacher has absolutely imparted into me this uh, need for my for my scores to be like easily readable. If you really want things to be looking right and symmetrical, then this can be a huge time suck, getting everything to be nice and well spaced out. And this, like, this looks terrible already looking at it. Like everything's kind of off and uneven, especially between the two pages that would be opened like a book. You know, even if you're just trying to add a couple of notes, the actual position of the bar you're writing in may change. It's trying to make space, see like right there, boom. It's What it's trying to do is make space in the measure. And this is part of the magnetic layout thing too. Let's see what happens if we take off the magnetic layout. It's trying to make space for the, for the smaller rhythms and that's great. Okay, let's turn that back on because I can't stand the way that looks. And, th and that's, and I get it. I get it, it's it's trying to solve a problem, but it literally, it just jumps everywhere. It doesn't give you a kind of focused view, so suddenly you just have to look for this tiny little blue note head to see where you are. And you know what's really a lot easier to see is these red note heads, and that's definitely not where you are. And it's just really frustrating. You can see it, it was down here, it was over here, now it's down there, so it's, now it's back up there. It's it, it just really throws me, it takes me a second to find the bar I'm looking at, like what kind of program takes the thing you're doing and moves it away from you to make you find a specific place and time again. It's easy to think that you did something wrong so you hit undo, just like I just did, you know, going back, hitting undo, but then the same thing happens, right? So we're just trying to change the rhythm, that's it. We're just trying to have some faster rhythms. Come on, like, please make it a little bit easier than that for us. My third big gripe with Sibelius is the ribbon menu this big thing up here that looks like it's right out of Microsoft Word because it literally is. Some people love this design, but I absolutely hate it. I found it so counterintuitive. Some things just aren't where you think they would be, like adding a bar and changing a bar line. Like let's say we go to home, we can add a bar, right? But if I wanna change the bar line, we can delete a bar, we can split bars, join bars. And in order to, change the bar line, I have to not, not go to inputs, go to notations for the bar line. Like, I, I guess I get it, but it still seems arbitrary. Like, why would this be at home then? Why are these in separate places? I can't tell you how often I'm just searching around the ribbon bar and searching for something off of some vague memory of where it was, but everything looks the same and still kind of takes me forever. Then I go up to the search ribbon function over here to find in ribbon, because everything here looks like it's all pretty condensed. It's easy to just forget where everything is. It's just awful. I just, I just can't say it. Over time, I just start to think that the software itself, the interface of the software is just gaslighting me. The previous menu system in Sibelius wasn't better either, but at least get rid of it completely when you're trying to go and move to something else. Uh, Sibelius has all these legacy windows that are esoterically located, which are integral to actual functionality. Like, let's say I want to change the audio engine. Cool. Okay, we go to configuration. Not there. Mixer. Not there. Where do I go? Oh, setup. What? I have to click this tiny little thing in order to find what I'm looking for. This is the exact same menu that was in back in Sibelius 6, maybe even further behind that. Got to oh, have to go to audio engine options. And this is like a very, very important menu to be able to find. And that is all they give you. That's it. In play, not even in home. You think that this would be part of the home system. Nope. It's in play. And you have to just go a little tiny there. And let's see. Let's try and find it. If I type in audio engine... I can't even, can't even find it. I can't even find it in the ribbon because it's here. It's not technically in the ribbon. That's infuriating. Oh man, okay. All right, so that's that's the ribbon. I hate it. <laughs> God, I hate it so much. My fourth huge gripe with Sibelius is uh, there's no shortcuts for these rhythms over here in the keypad. This is literally the bane of my existence. May maybe this exists, but I can't find it. Uh, it's, it's so common to not have a number pad these days, especially if you're on a Mac. And, you know, if you don't have like a regular workstation, if you're just working with like a 
like the keyboard that comes on the computer on the laptop or even you know some of the older ones that don't have a number pad you have to pay extra for the one with the number pad it it sucks they don't have an easy way to control these rhythms without the number pad you have to go all the way to this little menu over here that's that's no fun that's no fun right so if i'm trying to make this stuff happen make, make these quarter notes i have to do this cool oh but okay so then i have to go here go that there or i can I can say the note that I want to do. I can make it an F, then do the same thing over here. Okay, now we can got a little bit of a, more of a vibe going there once we had that happen. But I had to go all the way over here. Why can't I just do something else? You know, I, I hate having to constantly find this little window. You can get pretty far just using R as well. So if you're, so you want this, you know, you want it to be a quarter note, you hit R to make another quarter note, just wait you want to go, hit R again. Right, so you can do that. That is something that you can do, but come on, every single time. Like it sucks when you actually don't want to have the same type of rhythms in the same measure. Inevitably, you're gonna have to search for that damn little bar in the menu and you can close it out. Sometimes it's just not there. Now it's gone. How are we gonna find it? How are we gonna change rhythms now? Just we could sure we could like copy paste a rhythm. Here's a quarter note. We want to make this a quarter note, but now it's that note. We have to remember the note that it was in order to get it to match. That sucks. Oh man, how do we get it back? We have to find it in the ribbon menu. So now we're going back to back to my third gripe. Okay, where could it be? Let's find it. Parts? No. Appearance? Maybe. View? Maybe view. Oh, here somewhere over keyboard, uh, keypad, numpad, keypad. Yeah, there it is. Come on. I can't tell you how much easier composing would be if I could just hit option four or something like that to change to a quarter note and like a four, five, six, right? To do these, just have the option and then click the corresponding number on the, on the row above the keyboard over here. And it's not uncommon for a lot of this prosumer software to give you the ability to make your own shortcuts and Sibelius can do that. But in order to get there, Again, you have to go through the ribbon and go into these old legacy menus in order to find it. Like, let's, let's see, let's see if I can find it. Keyboard shortcuts. No? Uh, keyboard input sound or written pitches. So, like, I honestly, like, I, I can't. Nope, <laughs> nope. I can't find out how to do this. They make it so difficult to figure out how to use the software. It's it's crazy. You know, it's not the worst, but and you can always go to go to Google and find someone because someone else has inevitably invariably had this problem before you, and they'll and someone has already helped them for sure. That's time you're spending trying to figure out a bad interface rather than writing music, which is what you want to be doing in the first place. The whole thing is a pain, and when it really doesn't and it really doesn't have to be avid just needs to throw out some of this old legacy stuff and come up with a better system because this is nuts now my last gripe with sibelius here i'm a little bit more forgiving with this one but it's still frustrating nonetheless and it causes me a little bit of a little bit of pain when there's just straight up incorrect playback when you're writing you're literally hearing the music in your head and trying to get it out you've spent tons of hours learning musicianship skills, sheet music, proper notation habits, but when the playback doesn't match what's happening on the score, it's a pain. And in my experience, the biggest culprit of these are ties and arpeggio lines. The ties will often be ignored, especially if crossing a bar line, and will play the rhythm of the note that's it's being tied to. So let's see if it'll happen here. It might not happen every time, which is even more infuriating. No, of course not. Of course it's not gonna do it now. So sometimes what'll happen, it'll just play it like this. Like right at the very end. So the worst part is for me that it's not consistent when you just have to sit and hope that this time it's going to be fine or, or you know, but a lot of the time it can't, it just won't be. Especially if you're doing closed eye listens to a song or piece, this can seriously inhibit the flow of what you're trying to listen for. Arpeggio lines too are inconsistent. Sometimes you get the full arpeggiation in the piano and sometimes you don't. I'm gonna quickly bring up another piece to see if I can replicate this for you guys. So it's usually right around here where I, I notice that it just doesn't play the arpeggio part, right? And that's the arpeggio line is this line right here that I'm referring to, this guy right over there. 
it, it's just inconsistent. Like sometimes you get the full arpeggiation in the piano, other times you just get the top note. Let's let's see if it's going to redo it, uh, give it to us this time. Okay. Where is it? It's there's certainly more than just that high a, that this A going on. Where did where is the arpeggio from? Like why isn't it happening? Okay, nice, beautiful, awesome. Gone. It's just gone. I hate showing people this recording exactly because it doesn't. Rep it's not representing the music that I wrote. But sometimes you just have to get over it. Spellius does well enough most of the time. Like I got this other one just fine. Oh man, that felt good to get off my chest. To be clear, these aren't the biggest deal in the world, but they can cause some serious frustration over time. Avid, if you're seeing this in the future, I'm sure you won't listen to me. But maybe if all of us gang up on you, you probably still won't listen. Say, Livy, do you use Sibelius? Did you share any of my frustrations with Sibelius? Let me know down in the comments. If you're looking for some solid tools to help take your melodies up a notch, check out my free guide, Seven Ways to Write a More Effective Melody. There I give you proven tools to upgrade any melody in any genre. Head to justrightmusic.com. There's a link down in the description. That's all I have for you guys today. I'm Avi from justrightmusic.com and I will see you guys next time. Peace out. Peace out.